Hey, welcome back to Dr. Anton's Rockorama. I'm Dr. Anton Robleski, and it is a beautiful day here in Southern Texas. So I'm walking around in my backyard, checking out a variety of interesting little burrows made by all kinds of things, including insects, worms, spiders, and scorpions, even vertebrates like lizards and toads. Um, there's some really interesting little ones right up around the corner here, made by tiger beetle larvae. Tiger beetles are predatory, ferocious little insects, but their larvae are super cool and they make really interesting burrows that are even found in the rock record, or something like them is found in the rock record. Stick around for a few minutes and you might learn a thing or two about tiger beetles and their larvae and their burrows. So we're getting into the environment that they really like. Tiger beetles like sandy soil. They like consolidated sandy soil because they like to make a vertical shaft that the larvae will live in for up to a couple of years. Uh, they don't want that sediment collapsing in on them. And we get a lot of rain. In fact, we're supposed to get a bunch of rain tomorrow. They don't want that sediment collapsing in and crushing and killing the larvae. So they want a cohesive sand that the larvae can make a nice little vertical tube and maintain it. Um, so they're looking for really consolidated tight sand. Sand like this that occurs along a game trail. Um, this is a path used by deer, my ponies and my mule use it, but it's exactly the kind of consolidated sand that tiger beetles like. So we're going to take a look up here and see if we can spot them again. We were here the other day, I promise. Okay, this is cool. There's actually a tiger beetle right out there. Uh, it's really hard to see, but he's there. He, she is there. Uh, so there's an active adult tiger beetle, but then also we found the burrows. Here's one and there's another one over here. So let's take a closer look at them. Here's one right here. Notice it's a round little opening, really smooth around the edges. And here's another one right here. Take a look at that. Again, round opening, very smooth around the edges. There's no chimney. These little balls next to it, these are from an earthworm that's kind of pooped out the sediment. They eat sediment and poop it out the other end. So that's not from the beetle. And I know it's tiger beetle larvae that are making these burrows because, well, number one, I see the adults running around all over the place out here. We've got a really healthy population of tiger beetles. Right now it's early May. Uh, this is the time when they hatch. So by hatch, I mean the adults have pupated. Now let me take a step back and kind of explain what I'm talking about here. See, these burrows are actually the dwelling chambers of the larvae. An adult tiger beetle lays an egg. The egg hatches into a little bitty larva. It's kind of like a little grub. And the grub starts burrowing down, down, down into the sediment. And it makes a long vertical burrow. It lives in that burrow, but it's got a big, fat, flat, hard head. I've got this freaky hump on their back with these two forward projecting hooks that gives them a really secure purchase on the burrow wall so they can shimmy up and down and be really securely anchored to that wall. So if something tries to grab them and pull them out like a bird with a long beak or they're wrestling with prey, they can really dig in and not move too much. That flat head sits at the top of the burrow entrance and it kind of looks like a pebble. Unsuspecting insects, spiders come walking by and all of a sudden that tiger beetle sees them, feels them and lunges up, out and backward. It's kind of a freaky little gymnast thing. Grabs them, zips forward, down into the burrow and it eats them. It's kind of like a nightmare. You know, you picture if these things were as big as people, that'd be really, you know, a walk in the park would be pretty terrifying. That's what the larvae do. And they do that for anywhere from one to two to three years, depending on the species. And after that time, they sequester themselves at the base of the burrow, they plug it up at the top, and they pupate. So they create a little pupa, sort of like a butterfly or a moth. And in that pupa, they turn into an adult beetle. So after about, you know, a few weeks, maybe a month or two, the beetle hatches out of the pupa, scurries up to the top of the burrow, digs itself out and starts running around. They're called tiger beetles because they're really fast. They're predatory. They go chasing after other insects. And the crazy thing about them is, you know, researchers, because if you can imagine it, somebody's out there researching it, researchers have looked at the speed they move versus the amount of light that comes into their eyes. They have compound eyes like other insects. They've concluded that these little tiger beetles run so fast that the light Entering the eye actually cannot create a signal to hit the brain fast enough to create a clear picture of their surroundings. So essentially, they see a blur as they're running. Sort of like in Star Wars when you hit light speed and everything just kind of blurs. So these little tiger beetles, they can see clear as they're kind of standing still and moving slow. But when they decide to take off and chase something, 
it's a big blur until they plow into it and stop and then start chomping. Kind of crazy, huh? All right, so you're probably wondering, why am I a geologist, a sedimentologist who studies ancient rocks and fossils so interested in tiger beetles? Well, I'm glad you asked, and here's why. If you watched my videos on crayfish burrows, crawfish burrows, crawdads, mud bugs, whatever you want to call them, or cicada burrows, and that's been a really popular one lately because here we're in 2024, uh, and there's a big hatch of cicadas happening all around the U.S. Not here in Texas, ironically. It's kind of normal uh, hatch season for cicadas. But around the rest of the U.S., there's a big hatch going on. So a lot of people have been finding my video on YouTube, which is kind of cool. Thanks for watching. The reason I'm interested in these things is because they have a fossil history. How does a beetle or a larva or a burrow have a fossil record? Well, let me backtrack again. And if you've seen those videos of mine, you know, I like to pour plaster, dental plaster, down burrows. What the hell is wrong with you? And pull out the cast and see what it looks like. And this is what I've done here. This is actually a three-dimensional hydrostone dental plaster cast of a tiger beetle burrow. So this flat area is the ground surface. That's where the plaster filled in the burrow and spilled out over the top. So this gives you an idea of what the tunnel looks like underneath. So let me turn that horizontal. So it's kind of a slanting tunnel. It's kind of got a little bit of an angle to it and it's wider at the bottom it's narrower at the top but the beetle lives down at the base here now one is not really a good sample so i've poured you know a few of these things just to see what they look like here is another one this is believe it or not a different one um but it's got that same shape to it it's got kind of a almost like a little hook at the end you can see that pretty well here it's got that little hook and there's actually textures on it from the beetle's mandibles because they chew into this thing. So the way they're excavating is they're not digging with their arms and hands. They're actually digging with their big mandibles. Chomp, chomp, chomp. So you can actually see nice surfaces on this burrow wall. So the cast is picking that up. You can see the little chevron marks almost from the burrow wall. That's how they created it. Well, the reason I'm interested in that is because in the rock record, if you start looking at the fossil record, 90 million years ago, 100 million years ago, 150 million years ago, you find burrows that look a lot like these in the rock record, suggesting to us that tiger beetles or something a lot like them were making burrows like this for a really long time, chasing insects throughout the Jurassic, Cretaceous, and into the Cenozoic. That's kind of interesting. So burrows like this, made by a tiger beetle, are good evidence that these things are running around doing their thing, or something like them is running around doing their thing. Now I'm hedging that because let me show you something else. This is actually a burrow made in a substrate. It's vertical. It's kind of inclined. Okay, Dr. Anton, that's pretty clearly a tiger beetle burrow, right? I mean, you can't really see it too well on the camera, um, but, you know, there's some scratch marks on it, sort of like a tiger beetle. It's about the same size. In fact, let's put them side by side. Here they are side by side, the shorter tiger beetle and the longer burrow. Well, let me tell you something. This longer burrow has actually been made by not a tiger beetle, but a ghost crab down on the coast of Galveston, Texas. And again, I know that because I watched the crabs making their burrows. I poured plaster down and I actually, in this case, had to pull the poor little crab out and wash him off because he came crawling to the top covered in plaster. He survived, don't worry. Uh, and these tiger beetle burrow casts, by the way, were made after they were abandoned. So the animals had pupated, done their thing, the adults are running around, so no tiger beetles were harmed in the making of these casts or this video. I'm showing you these because it's an interesting conundrum when we're looking at the fossil record. You might find sand, which turns into sandstone, with vertical burrows in it, and you might say, well, it's a vertical burrow, kind of inclined, got a little hook to it, some scratches, clearly it's a tiger beetle. You might be right but it can also be a little bitty crab like this ghost crab. So you gotta be really careful. Now in the rock record, these things are called scolithos and scolithos is essentially just a name for any sort of vertical burrow, a vertical tube. That's roughly kind of looks like a pencil or a pen or a soda straw. Um, there's different ichno species of scolithos based on the geometry, based on the surface texture and so on. They're really kind of problematic because some people point to scolithos and say, aha, it's marine environments. A guy like me might come along and go, well, might be marine, scolithos made by a crab, or it might be terrestrial scolithos made by a tiger beetle or something like a tiger beetle. 
There's a lot of other organisms out here that make burrows sort of like this. So you gotta be careful with interpreting individual trace fossils as representing a very specific environment. So next time you're out there, and you know, hey, it might happen, if you're out there looking at rocks and somebody points confidently at a scolithos and says, aha, that was made by a mm -mm -mm, whatever in such and such an environment, just remember this and maybe turn them on to this video because take a look at this. Here's two potential scolithi, scolithoses, I don't know, uh, two vertical simple tubular burrows with some scratches on them, one made by a very terrestrial predatory tiger beetle, the other one made by a marine scavenger that lives on Galveston Barrier Island. It's a ghost crab. So, you know, that's some interesting little tidbits about tiger beetles. I'm watching the adults running around right in front of me here because it's their mating season. They obviously are having a really good year. It's nice weather for them. So we wish them luck. Make lots more little tiger beetles. I actually will be getting out some rocks in a few weeks. Um, so check back here. I'll be getting back to looking at some outcrops. We'll be getting back to looking at some trace fossils, proper trace fossils, not neo ichnology as it's called, uh, and real live rocks. As always, thanks very much for watching. Step away from the computer, get outside, look around. There's a lot of cool things out here. You never know what you're going to learn.